Hi, welcome to all about mechanical engineering. This is our second video on theory of machines and for today the topic of discussion is types of constrained motions. So what is the meaning of constrained motion we have seen in our previous video. Now we will discuss the types of constrained motions. So let's get started. Basically there are three types of constrained motions. The first one is completely constrained motion. The second is incompletely constrained motion and the third one is successfully constrained motion. Now the first one completely constrained motion. As for the definition when the motion between elements of a pair is in definite direction irrespective of the direction of applied force then the motion is called as completely constrained motion. Now in order to understand this definition in better way let us try to have some examples. So this is the first example. Here we have a cube in which there is a square hole and in that square hole we have a square bar. When we apply this linear movement linear force to this bar then it can easily slide inside or outside of this cube. But on application of twisting load or rotation this bar cannot rotate inside this cube which means it is having only a definite direction in which it can have motion irrespective of the direction of applied force. Whatever direction of applied force you choose it doesn't matter because there is only one type of motion possible. Here in this case it is linear motion. Now coming to our next example. This is our second example in which you have a cube. There is a circular rod having collars at the end. Now in this if I rotate this rod no doubt it is going to rotate freely inside this cube. But if we try to have sliding motion or linear motion of this circular shaft inside this cube then it is not possible. So these are the two examples related to completely constrained motion. Now coming to the second part. So second type is incompletely constrained motion. Now as per definition when the motion between elements of a pair is possible in more than one directions and it depends on direction of applied force then the motion is called as incompletely constrained motion. So the most important part in this definition is you should have motion in more than one direction and the direction of that motion should depend on direction of applied force. So let us take an example. Now I have considered the same cube there is a circular rod in it but here in this case we don't have any collars. So if you don't have any collars in this case we have a linear motion possible so the rod can slide inside or outside of this cube as well as if you apply a twisting load or torque on this shaft it can freely rotate inside this cube means what kind of effort at what point we are applying that will decide what kind of motion is available at this situation. Coming to the third point that is successfully constrained motion. As per definition when the motion between elements of a pair is possible in more than one direction but it is made to have motion only in one desired direction by using some external means then the motion is called as successfully constrained motion means it is possible that you may have motion in more than one direction but with the help of some external method or some external means we are restricting the motion only in one direction let us take example of this Suppose we have a thrust bearing or a foot step bearing. So this is the bearing surface and this is the journal. So this is the shaft. Now at this moment we have linear motion of the shaft possible here at the same time circular motion that is 
Rotation of this shaft is also permitted. Means here more than one directions are obtained as mentioned in the definition more than one directions. But it is made to have motion in only one direction. So let us try to have a load W acting in vertically downward direction on this shaft which restricts this linear motion. Now after application of this load this linear motion is not possible. That means we have motion in only one direction that is rotation of this shaft is possible. This is called as successfully constrained motion. Now this was all about types of constrained motions. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe our channel and stay connected with us. Thank you.